What's up Cats fans, Paul here from the Hoops Crew to talk about a piece of news that whilst not directly relating to our club, is going to have a big piece of the conversation this week and is obviously going to be a big topic for, for the year going forward. It begins with this bump here from St Kilda's Jimmy Webster against North Melbourne skipper Jai Skim Simpkin. He got sent in next week. Absolutely pulverised by Jimmy Webster here. And, you know, we flashed the camera back a couple of years and, of course, and I mean, like, maybe 10 years, and that gets ignored. Today, we're far more educated on the impacts of CTE and concussions, and we know this is very bad. And there are rules in place to counter this, but, of course, the damage is done. And so, right now, we're looking at a still frame picture here of Jimmy, of Jimmy Webster. He's jumped... He's hip and shouldered, and he's put Jai Simkin into next week. And so there's going to be a pretty significant consequence there for him, and I want to explore what that's potentially going to look like with a hopefully successful alt-tab job here. Um, I need to bring up the tribunals thing here, where we're going to take a bit of a look at the consequences for any player who elects to bump like this. There is no doubt in my mind that this was an intentional act, not necessarily with the intent to hurt, but it was an intentional act. Of course, he went he went to lay a bump, and we know the messaging these days is if you elect to bump and you get it wrong, the consequences are dire. And so, he elected to bump. That's intentional. The impact, severe. The guy has clearly been concussed. Um, he may miss North Melbourne's first game, which maybe it works out okay for him. That's that's two weeks, you know, close to two weeks away because they're not participating in opening round. Maybe he can play, but at the end of the day, that's that's a lesser issue to his health, and who knows how severe the damage uh, is to his health off the back of this. The contact is obviously high. It hit him right in the temple. And so if you look at the MRO's rubric that he has to work with, then straight off the tribunal. And I think four weeks, though, is a little bit unders. Now, let's, let's not get too carried away by some of the things that we're seeing on the internet here where some people are talking about, you know, give him 10 weeks and that's sort of like, Let's dial it down. It is worse than what Sam Palpepper committed over the weekend and his, his consequence was was hefty as well. Um, I should I should know that number off the top of my head, but I'll, I'll have to try and check it out while we're talking here. But four weeks, I think, is low. Um, and so I think what we're talking about here when it comes to Jimmy Webster, whether he likes it or not, um, is probably something that is closer to um, probably close to five to six weeks if I'm being if I'm being honest um, he learns fate of the tribunal what what did Sam Powell Pepper cop to be sure Sam Powell Pepper will miss the first four games so he copped the the minimum from that particular po uh, connection of points on the rubric and his bump was not nearly as severe as what I think we saw today. So, look, I wouldn't be surprised based on legal teams and all those sorts of things that get involved these days with it remaining at four matches because that's what the rubric says. It's four plus, and so let's he, he ticked these boxes, and hence, there, there we go, four. But if a bit of common sense prevails, and I don't, you know, sorry, St. Kilda fans, I know you won't want to hear it, but if common sense prevails, this should be five to six weeks as a starting point. Um and not the four weeks as a starting point that obviously the rubric would outline. So we'll have to see what happens there, but the, he's at least it's at least a minimum four. Um, there's no arguing that. It deserves to be higher. And obviously this conversation about CTE, about concussion, about the bump, and any other acts, the slinging tackles, that can, that can cause this sort of problem, this sort of risk, it's going to be an ongoing conversation. We know there's legal stuff going on in sports all around the world, not just our own. And the AFL needs to be able to clamp down on it. Players will need to be responsible if they commit an act that is going to lead to this kind of damage. And we need to get used to this conversation. Hopefully, as a Cats fan, our team isn't too caught up in it over the course of the year. But no team is immune. No player is immune. It can affect anyone at any given moment. And we need to be educating our young players and our existing players to tackle, to bump in safe ways. And if you can't do that, then don't do it which is a challenge, of course, but it's the reality of the game. Cats fans, let me know what you think. Neutrals, please, 
Let me know what you think as well. Am I getting a bit too heavy-handed? Have I not been harsh enough? Let us know. Go check out all the amazing Hoops Crew content. Behind the Players back soon. We've got uh, full Nuff mode. We've got the Chaps chatting cats. We've got a whole bunch of awesome things. Don't forget your tips with Rach Danfield is launching this week. So go check all that stuff out. There's amazing products that are exclusively on the Hoops Crew. Go check out the Patreon. Check us out on social media. There's some awesome stuff. Opening round is nearly here. The Cats are a week away. Thanks a lot for watching. Go Cats. I'll see you next time.